the tooth and uh, it just is going to give us a little bit more white. And thing to watch out for is if you click into an area which is too close to the lip color, sometimes it'll pick up on the face. Just don't worry about it. Just do an undo and back off and you'll be okay. The other one is an eyedropper. Uh, when this is just a, eye drops actually, this puts a little bit more white in the eye. Just cleans it up. Again, if you get too close to the skin, it'll go ahead and blend that into the skin as well. But you get an idea of how that works. There are two other very powerful tools in this area. One is Thinify. And Thinify actually would take part of the photo and squeeze it. And it will basically make things smaller, a little bit of liposuction, if you will. Uh, I won't have time to do that right now, but you can play with that if you like. The other one is suntan. Suntan is basically a brush that allows you to go in and give the person a little bit of a spray tan. Now, it is exactly that. It is a brush. So if you paint it over some part of the, the photo, it will darken it. So you can give suntan on the eyes or, or even on the clothes or on the background. So it's something you have to be quite careful with um, and you have to be a bit more of an artist to do it than I, than I am, but you can see how, how easy that sprays on and again you can adjust the strength and so on and you can also undo, which is what I like to do with that. All right, so one last little uh, tip. Uh, early on I was talking about how I love this thing called local tone mapping. Local tone mapping, very powerful, very interesting, brings out a lot of like, huh, wow, look at that. How'd you get that look? Boy, that's a cool photo. Local tone mapping isn't good for people. And uh, the, the, the point about it is that it causes a lot of contrast to be added to a photo. Um, I will show it to you just so you can see the result. Maybe you can find some use for this, but uh, generally, I know people that, and they, that, that I've shown it to and they don't want that done with their photo. But anyway, I'll just uh, add a little tone map to her. You can see a lot of definition comes out in the hair. Interesting with the clothes, but the fact is that it makes significant changes to, uh, to the face and the colors and the shadows. And it gives it a very grunge look. But um, I, again, that's something to be very, very careful with in the photos area. So that being said, let me hop back over to the organizer here. So that, again, just closing off on this whole thing called Express Lab. Lots of very powerful tools, amazing amount of stuff you can do with it. Uh, even if you get really, really proficient with all of the tools in the, in the main uh, full editor, which we'll be showing in a moment here, uh, the bottom line is this has got a lot of what you're going to need to use on a very regular basis. Just go ahead in there, go in and play, and you can make a lot, a lot of changes very, very quickly. So that's, that's a really cool thing. Now back in the organizer, uh, uh, I, I actually saved a copy of the changes I made to this, and you can, you can tell that because there's a little yellow pencil down at the bottom here. The interesting thing about that yellow pencil is that uh, it says that this has been modified, and what it also means is that I can capture the editing. So whatever steps I took to make changes to that particular photo, I can capture those changes, and I can go over and I can apply those changes to another photo or a group of photos. So imagine that you go out for a, a, a shoot with, uh, with the kids, uh, you're, you're shooting at a soccer game, it's an overcast day, and you need to change the white balance a little bit, and you need to change uh, a little bit of the brightness, uh, maybe a little contrast as well. So you go in and you make that change to one photo, and instead of having to go into a dozen photos that you wanted to keep that have that same need, you can simply capture the changes from one of those photos, Click on all, uh, click, select all of the rest of them, and click apply, and it's done. So it's very, very powerful in that regard. Very interesting and very, very easy to use. So just wanted to point that out. Now, let's uh, hop over to the full editor here. And I will just grab a photo. Now to get into the full editor, I can click on full editor up at the top over here, or I can just double click on an image from the organizer, and it'll take me right in. Uh, so this is what it looks like. 
Uh, this little thing over here is called the Learning Center. The Learning Center is a, a way that you can easily look at the different types of functions that you might want to try in the application, and it kind of gives you a little more guidance on, um, on how to use those things. So, you know, it could go to Express Lab or rotating or cropping and so on. Fairly, fairly useful, fairly easy to work with. And by the way, even for somebody who's used the application for a long time, go ahead and keep it up there. You'll, uh, you'll be referring to it on a somewhat regular basis. Another area that we have here are, is this tool palette. This tool palette has a lot of the, the more powerful tools. A lot of them overlap. So for example, the makeover tool you'll see here. You'll see clone brushes and paint brushes and so on. All of these tools are, are, are the kind of core set of things that you would use in, in your editing of photos. Uh, the other things you'll spend a fair amount of time on are the image menu, which has got a group of image-related uh, tools, the adjust menu, which has got adjustments in it, and then effects, the other types of things that you might do. So explore, play, and have a lot of fun, and you'll find that uh, there's some really, really interesting things that, you, that you'll be able to see there. Now, uh, in the full editor, let me... Uh, make a couple of quick things here. I'm going to actually make a uh, duplicate of this particular window and then I'm going to tile them. Oops, I didn't need her at this point. I'm going to tile these things uh, vertically uh, so that we can see the kind of before and after work that we're going to do on a photo. So I've loaded up these this flowering tree and I'm going to uh, make a couple of quick changes to that. First of all, again, interesting lines, uh, interesting sorts of colors, but it's very subdued and, and um, it just didn't pick up the colors that I was looking for. So I want to start with Smart Photo Fix, which you can actually find under the Adjust menu. Uh, and it's the second item down. There's one step photo fix, which will just give it its best shot. Uh, I always like to have a little more control. I'm going to run smart photo fix right here. I'm going to have it suggest settings uh, for me, and we'll see what that looks like. Oh, I probably want a little more shadows and a little bit more saturation in the colors there. And there we are. Just hit it with one tool, and already it's starting to look a lot better. So um, then let's. Uh, Let's use uh, a tool that's brand new to this application. It's called Vibrancy. Uh, and we're going to go down to Hue and Saturation and choose the Vibrancy option. I've preset this to be a uh, 42. That's a little bit high for it right now. So it uh, looks like um, I might want to take that down just a little bit. It's a little more more vibrant than I was expecting. Again, the application or that tool takes a while to run, uh, so I'll just leave it at, at this for, for right now, but you get the idea of how vibrancy actually takes colors that are there and it, it, it enhances them that much more. Uh, I can also find my local tone mapping tool under Adjust Brightness and Contrast Local Tone Mapping. I'll give it just a little bit of local tone mapping and you can see Sorry, there you go. So you can see that it uh, added some more contrast into the background, which is useful. And then um, uh, finally, I mean, there's a whole bunch of other things that we could do with this particular image with a little bit more of adjustments, a little content or color balance changes. But you get the basic ideas. All of your tools are here. They're in one menu or another. And uh, it's, again, a bigger tool set, a much broader set of tools but they're all here for uh, whatever you might want to, uh, to do. So I'm going to go ahead and close out those two images. I'm going to go back over to the organizer. I'm going to grab a couple of other photos here. I'm going to grab this dog and this tree. And I'm going to go back over to the full editor. Now, in photography, uh, one of the things we spend a fair amount of time thinking about is depth of field. And uh, I'm going to encourage you to uh, actually uh, try some things with your camera later on, dealing with the f-stop setting on your camera. Uh, is the, the, the bigger the aperture, the lower the f-stop number, the shorter of the depth of field that you get. So you start to get a picture that's like this, where the flowers here are beautifully in focus, and the focus Focus, the focal point is definitely there because the background, you know it's the rest of the tree, but it's also quite, um, 
quite blurred out, so you can see a big, uh, uh, a big difference there. Let me go ahead and close that. Here in this case, this, this, this dog, a lot of character to this dog, love this dog. Um, uh, basically, I grab a tool to make a selection. I can go ahead and wrap 